Hi everybody, this is just some guy and I want to get a little bit of uh, some house cleaning in order. First of all, I have now reached 1,000 subscribers, so thank you guys for all the support. Um, it's impressive because just last week I had 400, so thanks a lot you guys for the support. Um, you're going to hear some cars go by. It's basically rush hour here. It's 5 p.m., so there's going to be tons of traffic. Um, I'll try to stop talking if loud music plays. Um, the reason for this video is exactly what you see on the screen. 25% less spent on comics in August 2017 than in August 2016 as direct market sales fall off a cliff. Holy fuck. Unbelievable. I mean, this is, this is, this is like serious, people. Um, it, it really isn't something to be played with. There's been plenty of talk from lots and lots of different commentators about comics for the last couple of months and how bad they could be doing. This absolutely proves we are at that point. So uh, Rich Johnston is the one who's writing this, but he's talking about the, the general statistics for 2017. And we don't need to look at his, his numbers here. Um, you can just look at the numbers from Comicron And they have it. Uh, you know, these orders don't compare to 2016's Rebirth Boom. Dark Knight's Metal Paper Girls are at the top of the charts. What it says is that shipments were down 26% in new comics units, and overall retail dollars spent on comics, graphic novels, and magazines dropped by nearly 21%. Comic Cron calculates that $45.7 million in product shipped, down from the previous uh, August of so 2016's uh, 57.7 million and they also revived their July numbers which were also down um, they're at for about 42 million this is this is insane so these are in historic terms what they're saying significant drops they're not kidding so from June from June to August of this year um, it was down by 20.5% against what it was last year with Rebirth and Civil War II. Okay, so that's the worst three-month year-over-year comparison since 20 years ago. September of 1997 to November of 97. Just, it's unbelievable. This is, this is, this right here could be the signaling of the end of the comic book industry. I know that sounds like I'm being hyperbolic. I'm not being hyperbolic. This is ridiculous. So they don't really have the full laydown of the, the August numbers in comparison to, to previous years in total. They just show what the difference was. Uh, comics from July of August of this year to July of this year. So that back and forth. And you can, you can see, you know, the numbers are down from last year, 25%. The graphic novels are down by about 7%. The toy sales are down by about uh, 30, 33%. But if you really want to get an idea of just how bad it is doing, you need to look at the July numbers. Because, oh boy. So they do this little graph here for the top 300 shipped uh, comics. These are just the orders that were placed, and you have to keep in mind Marvel is bumping up their orders, so they're they're inflating their numbers. They're playing some games with it, so you can't really trust what those numbers are. But just looking at what the numbers were, July 2017. This year it was uh, about six million books that were shipped. That is down by 27 percent from last year, which was was. 8.6 million. Five years ago, it was at 7 million. So it's still down by 9%. 10 years ago, it was at 7.6 million. So it's down by 18% this year. Now it's up from where it was 15 years ago by about 3%. 15 years ago it was about 6 million copies that shipped. 20 years ago, it was 8.23 million. So it was down by 24%. So overall, all the all the comics shipped per month in July, 6.9 million, basically 7 million. It's down by 
understand this. It's lower compared to what it was last year than what it was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, it was down by 24%. Now, from just last year, it's down by 27%. This is just unbelievable how bad it is doing. Un, absolutely unbelievable. The, the dollar sales are down by 23%. The, the graphic novel sales are down. And, and that one's got to blow your mind because you got to remember 20 years ago, nobody was really buying any graphic novels. You know, trades weren't really that big. That really started back in 2000, 2001, 2002. So that's why they only go up to about 15 years ago. So each year it has progressively gone down each single time. And you can see that here that, you know, it's it's taking these hits. It, it built up and then it started dropping. And now it's down to about six, about six million dollars worth of, of a graphic novel shift. This is insane. This is not sustainable. You can't run an industry where you're losing anywhere between, and just being fair here, anywhere between twelve to thirty percent of your your audience per month is dropping. You're screwed. This is this is the industry at the moment. This is what we're watching. The complete degradation of the industry. Why is this happening? Well, let's let's just take a look at, at the books that actually came out. So if we go to the, the monthly sales, I think they put up the most recent numbers. Let's just check they did. They put up July. Let's have a look. Top selling books were uh, Dark Days, uh, the um, Dark Days, the casting, um, Astonishing X-Men number one, Batman, another Batman. So it's the same, it's basically the same series, it, either a reprint or it came out twice. And then Secret Empire number six. When we look at the actual numbers, it gets really, really bad because the top selling book only, or the top orders, the top ordered book only did 128,000. Next up was Astonishing X Men number one, that was 122,000. Then it was Batman, that's the, the top ongoing series, that one was 107, and then that was number 26. Number 27 did 102. Secret Empire six and seven, they barely cracked. 80,000. Secret Empire 6 did 80, 86,000. 7 did 81,000. Star Wars is next up. That's at 75,000. Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe again. That's at 74,000. Next up is Walking Dead. That's at 68,000. You have Spider Man 2, number 1. That's at 67,000. All Star Batman. That's at 61,000. I mean, if you take out all of these Star Wars books, you just remove those. The top selling book is Batman. The next ongoing series, at least when it comes from Marvel, is Amazing Spider-Man. That's doing 57,000. It's barely competing. And you'll see this. Batman, that's your top seller, okay? The next one up is still Batman, but it's almost 40% less. That's all Star Batman, 40% less. Okay, now, sure, you look at the numbers on the side here, and you'll see that in comparison to, you know, the same thing is happening here in July. In comparison to the previous year, it's down by 27% for July of 2016. Compared to July of 2017, 2017 is down by 27%. Uh, from five years ago, it's down by 9%. From 10 years ago, it's down by 18%. From 15 years ago, it's up by 3%. But from 20 years ago, it's down by 24%. And sure enough, if you look, I believe it's going to show that Marvel has a top number, but it's at it's barely 39%. DC is at 31%. Marvel is, is shipping twice as many books as DC. They're, they're printing, you, you can see this now, that on the items on the top 300, uh, Marvel has 91, DC Comics has 74, so it's not twice as much, it's about, two, it's about a third more. Okay, that's, that's, that's the problem. And this Marvel number includes the, the Star Wars books, by the way. 
you know, the industry is crashing. And why is that happening? Well, again, like I said, let's look at what they're publishing. Okay, you've got the top two being, you know, new startups. One's an event, and then the next one is a restart of, of something. So the number one doesn't really count. But what do you have going on here other than Star Wars books? N nothing exciting. You've got The Flash. You've got X-Men Gold. You've got Justice League. And uh, honestly, the current Justice League arc is pretty good. There are kids from the future come back, and it's like a jacked-up dystopian future. And Wonder Woman's a terrible parent who abandoned her, her son because he was male. So, you know, that one's good. I'm waiting for the arc to finish so I can review it. But, I mean, this is just insane. This is, this is not going to work. And this is a direct result from all the shenanigans that are going on at Marvel right now. Um, there is no excuse why Marvel's books shouldn't be doing better than this. And the reason why the books are not doing better than this is literally because of the people who are running the company and the way that they behave and the, the backlash that this is having. I don't think it's a surprise that when you look at the books that are at the top from Marvel, you're seeing... It's pretty much not the books with the SJW leans. I mean, the Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man, that's a number two. That's why it's high. Um, the, you know, the Amazing Spider-Man book is, is that high pretty much because it's the Amazing Spider-Man. That's, that's it. Otherwise, it, it, it's just tanking. All of these books are tanking. The, the only way to fix this at this point is to overhaul the industry. There is just no way about it. No other way around it. You have to overhaul the industry. You have no other choice. Um, and my best suggestion would be to start cutting your losses. First of all, cancel. Just Marvel, cancel like half your line. I mean, you're just overprinting books. The next thing to do is to, to borrow an idea that Eric Larson came up with many years ago which is to start bundling the books kind of like they do in Japan where they put out those weekly or monthly, uh, you know, newsprint thick books, you know, with all the different stuff, Shonen Jumps printed like that. Um, you, you would do this by combining different types of, of books. So, for example, all the Batman books could be in one little bind. It'd be all the Batman, Detective Comics, Batgirl, Batwoman, Batman and Robin, what have you. The Superman books would be like that. All the Superman family books would be in one little thing. It wouldn't be little. It would be big. You'd have about ten books in there. With the uh, you know, with Marvel, you could bundle all the X-Men books in one thing. All the, the Avengers-related books in one thing. And then you would sell that. And you put it on newsprint. It doesn't have to be great. Just put it on newsprint like they had been doing for years. Lower the cost for it. You can charge anywhere between 10 to $15.00. And then when you have enough stories, you can release them like they do in Japan in the trades. And then that way you can sell them individually and you can put them a higher quality paper then. That is probably the best way to resuscitate the industry. And you have to get these books out of comic book stores. I'm sorry, but you, you can't maintain an industry if you're only selling in one location. Especially when so many of those stores are closing down, in large part because... They can't sell the books. Nobody wants to buy the books. They're they're not interesting. They're they're not boring. Marvel has alienated so many people, and even though they do have good titles out there, they're being drowned out by the SJW nonsense. And DC, I mean, their stuff is good, but you know, it's not exactly bringing it out of anybody. That's a problem. So you you need to get these books back into grocery stores. You need to get these books back into convenience stores. Uh, you know, bookstores are closing all over the place, so good luck finding a good, you know, a bookstore to put it in. But you know, you could walk into a CVS, you could walk into Walgreens, and buy, you know, a nice, you know, like phone book thick version of like here are all the Batman stories that came out this month. You know, that would sell. You got to get more kids interested in your books. I'm with everyone else of you know, comic books don't have to be for little kids; they can be for adults. But you still have to maintain your audience, but you also have to grow it. And the easiest way to grow an audience is by getting kids interested in your product. This is what the gaming industry has done. Most of the games that are put out are for adults, but there are enough games that are out there that even though they're intended for an adult audience, you can let a kid play it and they'll really enjoy it. It's simple enough for them to understand, and that gets them into it. 
you're going to have some folks who are only going to, you know, play Pokemon. But you're going to have other folks who are going to dig in deep and play some, you know, some, some other stuff. They're going to branch out. That's what needs to happen here. You need to hire new talent. You can't just sit here and say, oh, well, we're only going to hire people who draw in this American style. No, you have an entire generation of people who've grown up watching anime and reading manga. And you know what? You just need to hire them. I don't care if you don't like the art style. Maybe you don't read that particular book. You need to hire these people because their their crowd, those those older millennials like me, the younger millennials, they read that type of stuff. You need to hire them. You need to stop going outside of the market. You have too many people who want to make comic books that you're not giving jobs because you ri- rather hire some some writer who's written one book. Stop going to get a novelist. I don't have any problem with bringing people from outside the industry, but that shouldn't be your first move. You should be looking for people who know comics, who want to write comics, who want to draw comics. Those are the people you should be hiring. That would help this industry. And you can't just bank on digital comics saving you because that's not going to work. Sorry. It's just not going to work. Uh, the digital market is is not that big that you're going to be able to sustain an industry like that. You're going to need print copies. This is insane. I mean, when you're looking at a 25% loss from, from you know, a year ago, that is, is un believable that you could even say something that you know and remember September 20 uh, September of 1997 that is when the industry is recovering from the crash so what we're experiencing right now is the comic book industry doing worse than it was doing after the bubble burst in the 90s that's how bad it's gotten that that is how bad it's gotten. This is just not acceptable. And everyone at Marvel, every single person at Marvel, Ike Pullmuter, that's the first time I've actually been able to get that man's name out of my mouth without having to say it twice. You need to either step down or you know be prepared to clean house. You need to fire a, a ton of people. That whole milkshake crowd, they need to go. You need new editors, you need you know new writers, you need to, to move some people out of the way. Um, I watched a video with Kevin Cummings earlier today where he was talking about, I'm just going to let the car pass real quick, uh, the video with Kevin Cummings where he was talking about you know maybe bringing in someone like, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Rob Liefeld, like y'all need to do that. You, you really do need to, to find someone, because look, Axel Alonso and Tom Brevoort, they've completely lost the thread. It, it doesn't matter that they were, they were good at one time. They're not anymore, and you shouldn't keep rewarding them. You demote them down to, to editors on a particular book um, and get them out of positions of control because they have run this, this company and pretty much the industry into the ground. Um, if Marvel is not doing well, the industry is not doing well. That's really what it is. This is a, a situation where you need this company not to fail if you want to maintain this industry. If you lose Marvel, even uh, what Diversity and Comic was suggesting in one of his videos of farming out the, uh, the, the, the comics to different properties, IDW or Boom or something like that, I think even that would probably just devastate the industry. Because you need Marvel to have its own imprint, its own thing. It can't be, you know, going over and, and sending sending work over to other companies. It needs to be its own thing. If we're at the point where Marvel's, you know, it's it's a name that gets put on a comic, but it's not its own company. It's not its own insulated thing. You're done. So, and I I I really don't know how else you're going to be able to fix this. Other than revolutionizing the way that you you get the comics out there, and I think, you know, the single issue market might just be done, and you're gonna have to contend with the the reality that in order to turn a profit, you're gonna have to bundle the books together, and and release them as you know these big anthologies basically on a monthly basis, and and do it that way, 
and then print the, the, the individual stories in their own trades. That's, that's going to have to be the way that you do it in order to save it. That's the only thing that I can think that's going to make it cost effective. Just going to let this car pass. That, that it's going to make it car cost effective, but also that you're going to have the potential to bring in a new audience. You're going to have to go back into the, you know, the grocery stores. Um, and you might even have to take a couple of losses, you know, a couple of months of losses. You know, both of these companies are big enough. Disney's big enough. Time Warner's big enough to take a hit. Take the hit for a quarter just so you can fix this. Because otherwise, you're not going to have a comic book industry in probably as quickly as five years, but certainly within the next ten years. It'll be done. So... I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news like that, but that's just the reality of what we're looking at. This is not going to go over very well. And it's really embarrassing that it has gotten to this point because of, you know, one company playing politics instead of doing good business. Because at this point, it's you really do have to start pointing a finger at Marvel. It's embarrassing. So, sorry. Sorry.